Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragon's Demise at Origins 2018. Uh, we're sitting down today with Ben Rossett, uh, one of our good friends from the DC area who's moved away since then, uh, but we've still tried to keep in contact with. Ben, thank you very much for being here. It's great to, it's great to see you guys here at Origins. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming out. and. Uh, yeah, great to talk to you. Glad yeah, we got for to do sure, this. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so Ben has a bunch of games coming out. It's actually been a very busy year for him. Uh, he's going to have one called Sugar Bash. I Sugar believe? Blast. Sugar Blast. Sugar Blast. Coming out with Steam on Games, sort of a, a Candy Crush competitive multiplayer game coming out, That's right. That's right. Um, and then also a game called Remnants uh, with Fireside Games, right. uh, which is a very different theme, sort of, sort of a post-apocalyptic resource management euro with some real-time elements. That's right. uh, so we're going to be, we have a lot to talk about, I think, right. in this interview. Great. Um, so Jenga interview format, standard style, uh, okay. at least for us. We've got the blue are going to be questions about your games. Red are going to be questions about sort of your work in the industry. Right. And green, anything goes. Okay. So if you want to take the first brick, All right. let's do it. Let's do it. Well, we could follow up from your introduction there a little bit about the games, if I can find a blue that I can that I can push out there. there How about that one? Let's. Take that one right from the middle. Should be safe. Yep. Put it up here and relive my childhood. With Perfect. Jenga. Yeah. That's, right. That's what we're going for. We're trying to capture that nostalgia. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Um, so remnants. Yep. You described it as a real-time, you know, sort of almost dexterity, quick reactions meets resource management and, right. and Euro-style worker placement. How? What? <laughs> talk, talk to us about that. That's right. So. It is real-time dice rolling, where it's a two to four player game. So all of the players uh, will be simultaneously doing a real-time competition for resources okay. in order to roll dice, uh, match resources on those dice, grab those resources from the wasteland. And then after the real-time phase is over, you use the resources that you collected in a, uh, a light engine building Euro kind of way of building up your compound, buying weapons, buying defenses, okay. um, buying special abilities in order to uh, fight the raiders that are coming into your compound. Sure, and that's that's over the course of a couple of turns? Yeah, there's uh, six rounds of the game. Okay. So you're doing this kind of six times. There's six real-time resource gathering collection phases, which only last for you know, a minute a or two, minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it's turn-based around the table using those resources to buy upgrades for your compound. Okay, interesting, interesting. Sounds like a pretty delicate balance. Yeah, I think that um, uh, Fireside has done a great job uh, developing the game. Uh, we signed it with them at Gen Con 2016. Okay. So it's been almost two years uh, that the game has been uh, in development. Uh, they've been working on it. They did a fantastic job. Uh, it looks great. We're really excited about it. Well, that's awesome. And that's yeah, coming out uh, Gen Con this year, right? Yeah, Around that, then? that will be for sale at Gen Con 2018. Okay, there uh, you go. They got demo copies here, but uh, but it'll be fully released at the end of July, I believe like July 27th, and then it'll be for sale at Gen Con. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's go, well, I mean, again, to follow up on the interview, or okay. uh, the uh, intro there. Okay. Let's go with another blue. Okay. So completely opposite end of the spectrum, at least thematically, Sugar Blast. Right. right. Uh, competitive Candy Crush game, you mentioned there's going to be sort of a three-dimensional component with right. uh, some, some pieces in there. How did you take this sort of almost standard, almost iconic casual game match three style right. and turn it into a competitive board game? Right. Uh, so my co-design partner, uh, Matthew O'Malley, right. uh, took the lead on this one, actually. We were working on it together, but he took the lead on uh, taking Candy Crush, just as you said, and turning it into a, a board game and a competitive board game. Right. Uh, he did a fantastic a fantastic job with this, where I think we achieve uh, keeping the, um, the soul of Candy Crush, which it is a match three, unlocking new content, unlocking new components, okay. uh, unlocking new levels, but doing it in a way that's, uh, that has a goal for each level. Uh, that is a competitive goal. So, uh, for instance, in this level, the the goal might be to get two sets of three different colored candies. Okay. Uh, and you you do it. Uh, the 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 game plays kind of the same way that Candy Crush does. On your turn, you can swap the location of two adjacent candies. And Standard then if you, stuff. If you make it's not candies. It's actually different types of you know desserts confections. and, and sugar confections. And, yeah. That's right. Sugar blast. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so you swap uh, the location of two different discs, and then it, you make a match of three or more, and then you, you get one of those discs, you actually take one of them into okay. your supply as, you know, I've made a match of the blue, 
uh, you know, the blue um, cakes, something right. like that. Um, take one of them, and I've made a blue match now. And so then the first player to get to, for instance, two sets of three of the same color might win that round. Okay. And then you unlock some new content and move to the next round and, and kind of do it again. Interesting. So yeah. sort of a, a progressive unlocking, you know, you get to the next stage yeah. type of situation. That's exactly right. It is, it's not, a, it's not a legacy game or a campaign game. It's fully kind of modular and resettable. So you can go through all the different levels, unlocking all the content, playing with the new components that are in the box that you haven't played with yet. Right. But then you can mix and match different components together with different rules and different goals sure. for the particular level that you want to play. Uh, it's nice that each game of it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes, right? Yeah, it sounds To kind of quick. do one level, right, it's pretty quick. So you can sit and play two or three or four games. Uh, you know, you could do a best two out of three if you wanted right. to do something like that uh, and just have fun with it. Um, put in your favorite kind of components and, and mix and match uh, different goals, different, different um, you know, uh, miniatures, different, different um, components in the game right. uh, and just have fun with it. Great, well yeah. that sounds exciting. Yeah. At the same time, it is strategic, right? So you're making interesting decisions about which match do I want to make not only that's going to progress me toward a goal, but so that I'm not going to leave the board in a state that's going to be particularly advantageous for one of my competitors. Exactly, and yeah. this is actually, I've been playing a little bit, a little bit of a personal story. I've been playing a match three game uh, lately on my phone that has you against another team, and so yeah. you got to be really careful about, you know, you don't want to set yourself up for, you know, a, a four or five match in the next turn, because then your opponent's just going to be like, oh, okay, boom. Right, right, that's right. right. Exactly. Yeah, got to be careful with that. Exactly. Yeah. Good deal. Uh, and oh, that'll be coming out at uh, that'll be out at Essen, and so should 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 be out. Little bit fingers crossed there, but should be out for Essen in the holiday season. Okay. So yeah, another uh, another one coming out towards the end of the year. Yeah. Busy, busy. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's been uh, it's it's been a terrific year, and it's been great to work with with these publishers specifically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Uh, you're up. Great, sir. Let's. Um, well, we're here at Gen Con, so let's talk a little bit about the industry. Origins. I, I'm sorry, we're here. We're here at Origins. It's okay. We got. We're we're at Washington. We're at Gen Con. We're at all the different That's conventions right. That's simultaneously. Right. I'm sorry. Quantum we're, quantum convention. <laughs> we're here at uh, Origins. Yes. So let's talk about the industry. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. See if I can pull a red one out. There you Ooh, go. That one's there you go. Good. And uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, so in addition to designing games, uh, which you have done for, for a fair while now, you've also been working on the manufacturing side of things. You work for Panda, uh, which is sort of a, a you know big, highly regarded uh, manufacturer of board games. Thank you. And you are their, I believe you said, director of training. Yeah, director of uh, training in HR as of just about a month ago, actually. Got a new position Congratulations. There. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So what is that like for you in particular, coming at it from, from both sides, coming at this from okay, I'm a designer, but also I have to be responsible for you know, manufacturing that. Do you right. think that gives you sort of, not insights necessarily, but do you pay more consideration to certain aspects that you might not otherwise? Definitely, like as a designer, maybe kind of knowing, yeah, I think that the two of them do, um, do inform each other. Sure, uh, sure. So certainly I'm a better game designer now because I've got that experience of uh, uh, mass production, of right. manufacturing now, and what it takes to, you know, get costs to where they need to be, what types of components are best to use in what situations. Yeah. Um, but the same thing also, my work with Panda up until just a month ago, uh, when my role shifted, um, I was a project manager. Okay. Uh, so for the last three years, I've been a project manager. Uh, and, uh, I, and I hope that a better project manager because I was a game designer, uh, so I can work with other designers, I can work with other publishers, I know what it's like to design a exactly. game, I know what it's like to play test a game, go through the development process, try to select components. Um, so it's it's been a joy for me to be able to to kind of um, be part of the industry from the, from those two different ends of it, from the, the initial creation to the final, you know, shrink wrapping of the box right, and, right. and getting them on a boat and, yeah. and sending them to stores. Well, and I'm sure the designers that you've worked with as well have been really appreciative to have, you know, a manufacturer who's so sympathetic to a lot of their concerns simply because you, you know what it's like to be in that position. One of the things about Panda is that we, we really do hire, we hire gamers, right? That is... 
uh, is pretty pretty much a requirement to work for Panda is is to have a passion for gaming and a right. passion for board gaming. It's so, a good requirement. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, gamers know what gamers want, and yeah. gamers are involved in the industry and following trends and um, excited about new things that are happening. And so we want to do the best for our clients, and the way to do that uh, is to, to have to have gamers making games, and so uh, that's what we do at Panda. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, we haven't had one in a green yet. We haven't had okay. a wild card. Um, wow. Maybe that's why. Because <laughs> they're all really aha. There you there go. We go. Found a good one. Leaving that bottom. And you left middle, it a little, little precarious there. there yeah. But, uh, all right. So one of my favorite questions, and everybody who's been watching these videos will know, uh, has been, "What's your favorite donut?" But okay. actually, uh, in honor of some of the games you've designed, I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite beer? What's my favorite beer? You know, my good question. My favorite beer is called La Folie from uh, uh, New from New Belgium Brewery, okay. I believe. Uh, the ones that do Fat Tire. Yeah, yeah, New yeah. Belgium. Yeah, New Belgium. Uh, it's a sour brown, and it's delicious. I love sour beers. And I, I yeah, also I'm love right there dark beers as well. Okay. Uh, so this is a just a lip smacking sour kind of a beer, you know. Okay, it sounds uh, pretty different. I might have to check that out. Yeah, I think I think that they do a uh, an annual release of it. Okay. I don't know if they. I think they're still making it. So my favorite beer ever. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, oh, uh, pick what are another we doing? One? What are we doing? Yeah, what do we think? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know. Let's do. Uh, Let's do another red. Let's do another one of the Yeah, let's talk about the industry a little bit. Great, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the things that we've asked you before, you know, you've, you've had been on the podcast, we've, we've done interviews with you before, um, is sort of what's it like to work with a partner? Um, and I know you you told me before we, we went live that, um, you know, you actually have a dedicated game design partner, Matthew yes. O'Malley. Yeah. Um, and is that, you know, how helpful has that been to you, really, in going through this process? You know, just whether it's in terms of, of game design and being able to bounce ideas off each other, or simply navigating the the waters of you know talking to publishers and, and working with manufacturers. Has it been helpful to have a partner in that? Yeah, absolutely. We've been working together full time now for about three or four years, maybe four years. Uh, and I was doing game design, you know, on my own before right. that. Uh, he and I hooked up uh, for Between Two Cities as the first yep. game that we I did together, and we've been working full time ever since. And yeah, you know, a lot of it is just the two heads are better than one. Yeah. Uh, and so, as a game designer, you can kind of get in the weeds with your game a little bit, and 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 get tunnel vision a little bit, right? You're right. looking at it from this perspective, and you have one particular thought process about the game, about how it should be, what it should be about. Um, and it sometimes can be hard to fix problems or even to see problems in the game. Sure, and sure. to get another person with fresh eyes to look at it uh, is is just invaluable. And yeah. So I think that um, uh, you know, not to be cliche, but the the whole is you know greater than the sum of the parts. Right. And, right. Uh, and that's what it is. Uh, you know, working together, I think that we can put out better quality games, which is what we're really trying to do. Is is to, Put out good game, not just put out a lot of games. Right. Uh, you know, we'd rather do fewer games a year, um, but have them really be ready for publication when we Absolutely. pitch them to publishers. Uh, so that's the approach that we're trying to take, and I think having two of us work together really helps toward that. Sure, helps keep each other honest and yeah, stay yeah, on top definitely. Of and you know, one of us might have uh, a, a particular excitement. A, a one, you know. Matthew's really excited about this idea, so he can go and run with that. Yeah. And I'm particularly excited about this other idea, and I can go and run with that and take the lead, and then we can kind of toss it over the fence to each other a little bit, yeah, yeah. and you know, and get feedback. And uh, so uh, that's the way we've been doing it. It's been working out well. That's really awesome. Thanks. Uh, I'm gonna go for a blue here. Let's okay. See if I can find one. Yep. Got it. Uh, so uh, the games that you've got coming out. This year, you know, you've got Remnants, you've got Sugar Blast, um, and you've got one that I believe you said was moving towards a, a Kickstarter campaign. That's right. Um, all of them are very different theme, very different tone, uh, mm -hmm. and in addition to that, they're they're quite different from things that you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you seem to like to keep it fresh, mm -hmm. uh, and is that? Do you find that that's a challenge for you in moving into these different spaces, sort of? breaking the comfort zone almost? Or is it something that you enjoy doing, is, is finding new niches to work yeah. in? 
It's definitely something that I enjoy doing. Uh, it's come fairly natural uh, to me. Uh, and I think what I've always tried to do as a designer since I started designing games is to design whatever inspires me. Sure. Uh, and so that's where I, I, I follow, right? Uh, if I get an inspiration, if it's a theme, if it's a particular mechanic, mm -hmm. I, I go with that, right? So I try not to say, I definitely want to design a worker placement game, or I definitely want to design a game about beer, or it, it, I'll be out in the real world living my normal life, and I'll see something, I'll hear something, I'll read a story, something will inspire an idea inside of me, and then I'll go with that. So um, I've, been, I've been following those instincts, uh, and so that's why the themes of games that I've worked on have, have been different, mechanics have been different. Um, I think that it makes me a better designer also sure, sure. not to only work on worker placement games or not to only do social deduction games or whatever the case may be. Right. Uh, I think that um, you know the way to become a better game designer is to play a lot of games and to try to step out of your comfort zone a little bit with different mechanics that you haven't worked with yet, really understand how does this work? How do auctions really work? What are the different types of auctions that you can have in a game? And you know, which one is a particularly good situation for this game? And right. kind of working through those problems and working through those um, those ideas, I, I think helps in the long run. So um, I've tried not to typecast myself, right? Yeah. I don't no, want absolutely. all my games to be about beer. I don't want all my games to be worker placement. Uh, and so, but you know, I'm trying to have as much fun with it as I can and just follow um, instinct and passion and, um, and inspiration and, and go from there. Yeah, well, it definitely pays off. I mean, you know, like, thank you. You know, all the games of yours that I've played at least have been, you know, fantastic and, and wildly distinct. And I think there's absolutely something to that in, you know, you mentioned that you need to sort of branch out and familiarize yourself maybe with, yeah. with different mechanics and see not just what they're like but how they reinforce one another right. and how they can be combined in some unusual ways like with Remnants perhaps. That's right, that's right, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it was a long path to get to where uh, Remnants kind of ended up but um, yeah, you know, it, it, it was a little bit like that with Remnants. Uh, actually, we had uh, a theme first. It's actually a different theme than what the game is actually coming out now. The theme was, was changed by Fireside. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but we had the theme first and we said, what would be a good, what would be good mechanics with this theme? And some kind of real-time um, uh, uh, conflict, uh, some yeah, kind of time-based thing seemed, seemed right. Um, but then also we felt, well, what would you be doing with those resources? Well, you'd be doing a kind of engine building kind of thing with them. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if uh, real-time dice rolling and engine building can work together. And here we are. And here we are. That's right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, was that you or was that me? I don't know where we are. I think that was you. I think it's my turn. I think turn. it was me, yeah, all right. Yeah, I think it's my turn. Okay, great. Uh, okay, how about a rando? Oh, rando. Maybe okay, we can like try rando. to get green here. The, yeah, the greens are in there pretty tight. Here we go. I got one from the bottom. Here. Okay. All right. Um, so we are, in spite of all of our, our fumbling, we are at Origins, uh -huh. uh, which is a blast. And I have been asking a few people, but I thought I'd ask you, now that okay. we're into the third day of the con officially, right. what's uh, the craziest or most interesting thing that you've seen at Origins this year? Wow, okay, put me on the spot. The craziest <laughs> or most interesting thing I've seen. I think that, that, that head over there in the hallway, have you seen this in oh, Hall and, C? Yeah, in the atrium. Yeah, in the atrium. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't really, I don't even know what it is. Do you know what that thing I, is? So it looks like, so we're at the Greater Columbus Convention Center, right. uh, and I'm fairly certain that there's a, it's like a photo booth, and you can go in and you can have a, a headshot taken, Okay. and then there's a, I don't know if it's a projector or if it's an internal lighting thing right. that will display your face on this, this like sculpture that's sort of designed to look like uh, you know, mimic the shape of a human head. Okay. And it's it's we it's so crazy. So uh, all the faces, and this thing is huge. I mean, yeah, it's got to be 10, feet 10 tall, 12 least. feet high yeah. and 8 feet wide, something like that. Yeah. And so this is actually people here at Origins, I, their I'm faces are what's fairly appearing? Certain, okay. Uh, okay. It's cordoned off, so I haven't been able to get yeah. too close to it. Right. But I'm fairly certain I've seen like a photo booth entrance in the back of it. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, I think that's right. what that is. All right, cool. All right, that's, yeah, that's I a good that's answer. that's the craziest thing I've seen so it's, far. It's a weird yeah. installation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, what do I want to do? Let's go. Aha, let's go for a red. Okay. 
Uh, so you recently, uh, when I met you, you lived in Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, and you've recently, within the past year or two, uh, have, have moved. You've moved That's to a right. different city. Um, and I know that board gaming, as with a lot of industries lately, has become fairly uh, diffuse. You know, it's, it's very much online-based. A lot of, you know, conferencing online. A lot of communications take place that way. Uh, but have you found that that's been a challenge for you at all, logistically, just in terms of being able to uh, communicate with, with your partners, whether it's a manufacturer? Right. Has, that, has that presented any logistical challenges? Uh, there are some logistical challenges. Certainly time zones are a logistical challenge. So when I'm working in my role with Panda, working with China, right? right. You know, being 12 hours uh, time difference yeah, is I when I'm sleeping, they're up. When they're, when they're sleeping, I'm up. So uh, that, that can certainly be uh, a logistic challenge. A logistical challenge. We got there. Um, and um, yeah, so so language, time zone. Um, other than that, though, I, you know, I mean, video conferencing is pretty good these days. Yeah. There's uh, available things like, um, uh, you know, uh, being able to play games online, Tabletopia, things like yeah. that, where you can. Uh, does, I don't really do this myself, but I know a lot of designers that kind of do play testing online. Yeah, they use it as almost a workspace. Yeah, use it as a workspace, do design, do development, play testing. Um, and, uh, but one thing that's fun that you can do is actually, I have done this played games over the internet, right? So okay. if you have a game that's not, that doesn't have particularly a central board, or even like something like Agricola. Right. Like you and I could play Agricola like halfway a, across the country. Sure, like one of those old play-by-post chess you, games. Yeah, like something. if you have yours set up, and I have mine set up, and I just tell you what move I'm doing, yeah, and you yeah. replicate it on your board, on yeah. your side of the world. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, so I've done stuff like that before, which has been fun as well. So yeah. um, so, so challenges, yeah, you know, um, um, time zones, I, I, I think, are, are probably the biggest challenge. Um, and, you know, internet connections, every once in a while you're on Skype, and it just goes away, and, and you know, the <laughs> <laughs> call hangs up and it disappears, but and you're like, um, well, but uh, you know, I think that it's you know, obviously, in internet technology has been such a factor that's allowed the industry to boom and to grow. Yeah. Not only with Kickstarter, but also the fact that I can work in Chicago, work for Panda, and you know, be text messaging in real time with the factory in China, which yeah. wouldn't even have been possible, you know, 20 years 20, ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's allowed the, the industry to, to move forward and people just to do amazing things together. All of the great content that you guys at Dragon's Demise and other content creators are putting out is just helping the industry to grow and explode. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, get it all out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then once in a while we still come back together and of course, you I know, mean you got to have the conventions. To, yeah, come to awesome conventions like this. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Well, I think we've got time for one more question. Okay. So it's great. your draw. Make it a good one. All right. Great. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you go. I'll let you pick anything you want. All right. Let's see if this works here. Oh, is this? You got. It. I mean, if it falls, the interview's going to be over anyway. So. Oh, I think you got it. You All got right. it though. All, All right. right. Here we go. All right. Green. Random. It's up to you. Got to go out on a good one. Mm -hmm. So, talking about travel, talking about logistics. You work in one place. You have your your office in another. Uh, if you could teleport to any city, and it doesn't have to be right now, if you just had the ability yeah. to teleport to any city in the world on a consistent basis, what would it be? Rome. Rome. Okay. Great answer. Just because of the, the culture? You want to see the, the architecture? The, what are we feeling? The culture, the history. It's warm in the winter. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I uh, I was there. It's been about 15 years since I've been in Rome, but I love the city. I mean, just amazing amazing history there uh and uh and the culture and and good food and yeah. good weather and uh so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say rome 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 yeah. good choice all right a mediterranean climate for ben rossett that's right ben thank you so much for joining us yeah. here at origins 2018 it's been a pleasure do you want to do the honors oh wow, oh, wow. okay a... that was hey there we go, there we go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of the convention thank you very much it's been a pleasure thanks for having me thanks everyone for tuning in